Our next speaker, also a fantastic journalist, New York Times best-selling author, investigative reporter for the BBC, The Guardian, and Rolling Stone, Greg Pallas broke the story of how Jeb Bush purged the roles of thousands of black voters in, the Flor in Florida before the 2000 election, a curiously timely topic today. He's the recipient of many prestigious awards, including the George Orwell Courage and Journalism Award, the Upton Sinclair Freedom of Expression Award, and the Financial Times David Thomas Award. Election fraud, war profiteering in Iraq, financial vultures, the war on terror, and globalization are subjects of some of his print and television investigations. His latest book launched today right here, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, How to Steal an Election in Nine Easy Steps. Greg Pallas investigates Karl Rove, the Koch gang, and their buck buddies, as he puts it, including a, a comic book by Ted Rahm. Robert Kennedy called him the last investigative reporter in America. Katherine Harris called him twisted and maniacal. <laughs> and the White House simply said, we hate that son of a bitch. I give you Greg Pallas. <laughs> OK. OK. Yeah, you can stand up if you just want to stretch. But uh, let's get to work. Uh, thank you, Bobfest folks. Thank you, my governor, Ed. Garvey, John Nichols, a giant, my lawyer, Mike, Papantonio, who is, uh, and who is a law partner of my work partner, Bobby Kennedy. And thank you so much to the great team at the Progressive, to Bob Fest, and especially to my mentor here tonight from the Steelworkers Union oil candidate, he said, Lowski, one more time, please. And I have a special guest for you, a surprise. I didn't tell Ed, I didn't tell no one, but I have here, I have here the worst teacher in Chicago, from the city of Chicago, one of our great school teachers, Mary Arendt, please stand up, from the city of Chicago today, please. I want you to stand for the teachers of Chicago right now. Our honored guest today. Our honored guest today. You bet. If you looked at my at gregpalace.com, you'd see a story called The Worst Teacher in Chicago, made up of four teachers who have the same story. She's the worst teacher in Chicago, according to um, Romney Emanuel. Thank you. Overpaid because she has that terrible thing, a master's degree, advanced degree, special training and special education, and in several subjects and, over, and nearly three decades of experience. Right? So she's one of those terrible teachers who then volunteered to work in a school with, close your ears, poor children. And believe it or not, Believe it or not, when they were dodging bullets instead of having breakfast, they didn't score too well. So she, her school was closed and she lost her job. She was thrown out one of those terrible teachers with the low scores. And nearby, they opened a charter school. That would save us. Where you don't have to worry about credentials and experience or anything. And the teachers work dirt cheap. And they were able to hire a hotshot teacher. But at a much lower price. Same woman, Mary. That's how it is. It's not about improving educa or educational reform, the way that they talk about reforming Social Security, which means taking it away. It's a class war in the classroom. It's create chartered schools so that most of the kids will be left in uncharted waters. To, have you ever heard of an industry saying, let's not look for the most experienced, most credentialed workers, let's only hire those without experience, without credentials, because then we can replace them with for-profit schools with for-profit robots to, because they say they want that they, that our future is the children. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Romney, Emmanuel, it's true. The children of China who will make the things you want, and the children of India who will program them. And our kids only need to have enough education to stack the boxes from China in the Walmart. 
one more time for our guest of honor, our honorable guest, Chicago school teacher Mary Aaron. Thank you. I have a question for you, Wisconsin. For you, Paul Ryan? <laughs> Paul Ryan? Okay, here's the question, quiz. Who invented Paul Ryan? Who hatched Paul Ryan? Well, I am an investigative reporter for BBC Television, which, as you know, I have to do over there because over here, investigative journalism is not permitted under Patriot Act 3, except on the democracy now. Now, who is Paul Ryan? I've been, I've been investigating this man, and according to the Wall Street Journal, and according to the information I have, Paul Ryan was raised by vultures. <laughs> this is true. No, 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 come on. This is a fact. It's a fact. It's a biological fact. Okay, and I'm gonna explain. See, because I looked in the, I said, where did this guy come from? And the Wall Street Journal said that Mitt Romney picked Mr. Ryan at the request of his number, most important donor, Paul Singer. Now, who's Paul Singer? I could, the number, the most important donor to Mitt Romney is Paul Singer, and he picked Ryan, who is this guy? Paul Singer, that name rings a bell. Oh, because he's not known as Mr. Singer in the banking world and throughout the world. He is known as the Vulture. I didn't give him that name. That's the name his bankers give him. The Vulture. He's the guy that hatched Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney. Now, I've been tracking the vulture for BBC television, for The Guardian, and for a show you may have never heard of because it's not on your TV called Democracy Now!, where I've tracked the vulture to South America, to the Congo, to Europe, to Detroit, and just came back from the Congo where the vulture, the vulture, figured out a wonderful way, he's a multi-billionaire, and one of his billions was simply made by taking money that was meant to end a cholera epidemic in the Congo. This is what I got out of the Congo for BBC. He took the money to end the cholera epidemic and put it in his pocket through an extraordinary financial flim-flam, which the British government has now declared illegal. The German co government has declared illegal throughout, even, by the way, even Paul Wolfowitz, so even the wolves don't like the vultures, has said this is a crime. In the rest of the world, the guy that gave you Mitt Romney, the guy that gave you Paul Ryan, the vulture, is an international outlaw, but for Mitt Romney and in the United States, he's a job creator. Okay? This is where, now, vultures eat, feast when things die. They feast when things die, like the banking system. When Lehman went down, and took my pension with it, by the way, personal. The vulture swooped down and picked up Lehman and has made a killing, literally, from TARP, from the TARP funds. But I will say that one Wisconsin congressman stood up and took a principled position against TARP, Paul Ryan, and then voted for it and got a huge check from the vulture, who is overwhelmingly his number one donor, okay? Now, maybe you've heard of a corporation that used to be here in Wisconsin called General Motors. They had a place in Janesville, in, I can't remember whose district. <laughs> GM was on its knees 
was on its knees, and down swooped the vulture and grabbed the auto parts division of General Motors, and he paid 67 cents a share through a wonderful financial flim-flam. He got it, the parts division of General Motors. And then the Obama auto team said, okay, we've got a, we've got a system to save the plants, to save the auto parts industry, and they, we've, they lined up the whole deal, and they told the vulture, we're going to give you a billion. And he said, no, 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 not a billion. So he paid 67 cents. He wanted $22. He wanted a 3,200% profit for his money. He wanted two and a half billion in his pocket. And, and the auto team said, are you nuts? And he said, well, you're gonna have some very funny looking cars without steering columns. He literally grabbed the industry by the ball bearings. I am quoting you, we will shut you down. It was pure blackmail. We will shut you down. Chrysler said it could run three months without the steering columns and GM said it could run three hours. He got his 3,000%. He got his billions from the auto bailout money. And I will say one Wisconsin congressman stood up against this bailout, Paul Ryan, and then voted for it and got a heck of a big check from the vulture and a reward, the vice presidency, the nomination, right? Now, when I say the vice presidency, How can they win it? You do the math. If the 1% votes and the 99% vote, they can't win. The vulture doesn't stand a chance when humans vote, right? So they can't win it. They have to steal it. Now, how does that happen? The answer is, there's a flower. The answer is turd blossom. Now. It's a flower. It's the nickname that George Bush gave to the guy with the plan to steal the election. Ah, the smell of Carl Rove in the morning. You see, now how's he going to do that? Okay. Well, as I said, today, here, right now, in the next hour, I'm releasing a book from my not-for-profit foundation with cartoons by um, Ted Rowell. Yes, you are going to have to get this. Yes, you must. Um, it is the all the jokes you can make about the end of American democracy. It's called Billionaires and Ballot Bandits with an introduction and a chapter by Mike's partner, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And we tell you about the billionaires and the ballot bandits because I've been tracking these guys for years. It's, you, people don't steal elect, uh, votes to win elections. They steal votes to get the money. So this is a book that traces from the billionaires, the vulture, the ice man, the snake. Again, I didn't give them these names. Their grateful bankers did. That's who's here and how they're gonna do it. Now, how are they gonna do it? Bill, billionaires and ballot bandits, how to steal an election in nine easy steps. Let me just give you one. So you have to get the book for the other eight. Let me give you one. And this is where Rove comes in, data trust. Back in 2000, I discovered that there was a computer program that seemed to target black people and remove them for the voter rolls. And sure enough, I found it. Catherine Harris's purge list of felons, criminals, bad folk who shouldn't vote. And indeed, I now have totaled up those lists to 94,000 names and they were guilty of voting while black. Like, like Willie Steen, 
an African-American Gulf War veteran that I met who took his five-year-old son to vote with him to learn about how democracy works, and boy, did he get a lesson. They, the, the person at the desk said, your daddy can't vote because he's a criminal, he's a felon. They knew that because he was right next to the, his name on the voter registry. It said B-L-A, B-L-A, black. He's a felon. Turns out he was matched with a guy named Willie Osteen from Ohio, who committed a crime in Ohio and was removed in Florida. Nice little program, how they come up with this. And here's another one. Bobby Moore, Mrs. Bobby Moore of Florida, lost her vote too. She's another BLA. She lost her vote because Mr. Robert Moore committed a crime. Mr. Robert Moore committed a crime, so Bobby, B-O-B-B-I, lost her vote, Robert Bobby. That's how they did it. And not only that, but Robert committed his crime in 2014. Now, really? Here's the ugly part. That's not from Katherine Harris's 2000 list. That's from the state list today. Today. How many innocent people are on that list? Every name. Because I went to the Attorney General and I said, if you have an illegal voter, would you arrest them? They said, absolutely. I said, so how many from this list of 90,000 names? How many have you arrested? He said, well, none. I said, he says, it's just a list. It's just America now. That's purging, one of nine ways. There's tossing and ejecting and prestidigitizing and, and uh, I can't even remember them all. I have to look my, I have to buy the book and read it myself. So billionaires and ballot bandits, how to steal an election in nine easy steps. And Bobby called one of those methods a crime. And that's where Mr. Rove comes in. He says it's a crime. They should be in prison, but they aren't. Mr. Rove has a, has a data system called a data mining system called Data Trust has more information on you than the FBI legally has. And that's combined, and the singer, Vulture the Singer, Singer the Vulture, I should say, has put Data Trust together with a system called Themis, another massive data mining system, which is funded by the, these uh, guys, I don't know if you heard them, the Koch brothers. Rove and the Koch brothers together with two combined computer systems where their purpose is to target, not to convince you to vote for Romney or Romney Emanuel or whomever. There's no swing voters. It's to make sure that your vote doesn't get counted. 5.9 million votes. We detail how the 5.9 million votes minimum will be stolen. And one of the ways they do it is caging. They use those lists, they send out mail to voters and say, welcome voter, and it says, do not forward, first class, very expensive, it takes millions to send out first class letters. And so what happened, letters came back where it said, do not forward, and the Rove operation used that, they did this already, to challenge the right of people to vote. Okay, well, because they said it's a fraudulent address. Well, who's, who are the fraudulent voters? Well, here in Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, is a list of fraudulent voters. You notice that this list, every one of them, is at the Naval Air Station in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, Mr. Rove, why wouldn't a soldier be at their home naval base address? They challenged the votes of active duty soldiers sent overseas, especially those that were BLA black. And as prof law professor Kennedy says in the introduction, that's a crime. And so are the guys, is Rove in jail? No, he's running a quarter billion operation called American Crossroads. Is the guy who helped him do it and sent out the list, Tim Griffin, is he in jail? Bobby said he should be in jail. No, he's in Congress. Put there by a $164,000 donation from the Kochs. And by the way, you give $164,000 to a congression in a congressional race from one source, that congressman will wash your car with their tongue. And that's what he's done. He's the big sponsor of the XL Pipeline. Read it in Billionaires of Ballot Bandits. You'll find out the Koch's connection there. There was a third guy, Turd Blossom's assistant to his assistant, named Matt Rhodes. He's not in jail either. He is the manager of the Romney for President campaign. Congratulations. Now, how do you stop it? 
First, you know about it. You have to know how the burglars get into the safe, billionaires and ballot banners. All proceeds, as they said, go to the not-for-profit foundation so that Mike and Bobby and I can, uh, Mike's involved in this too, we're going to be taking these guys on legally but informationally. But you need something else besides the book. You're going to need this, seven ways to beat the ballot bandits. I call it, it's your, think of it as the way to protect your vote. It's at the back of Billionaires and Ballot Bandits. It's free. If you don't get the book, just go to ballotbandits.org, download it, reprint it, send it on. It has more information, ballotbandits.org. Think of, this is how you save at least your own vote. Like, don't go postal, things like that. 488,000 votes were mailed in the last election and tossed out and never counted because Rove, Data Trust, and the Themis machine will know who you are and figure out that, for example, one of my favorites, tens of thousands of votes trashed because they had the wrong size envelope they were mailed in, which were given out by the Republican Secretary of State so that the state deliberately gave people the wrong size envelope and then disqualified the vote. That's how they do it. Don't go postal. This is your ballot condom. So that's what we need. And I'm going to leave you this. Okay. Right? This is our investigation together for the teachers, for the kids. You know, I did, in my investigations of the Vulture, the Iceman, all these guys, I used to be an investigator. Eddie Sidlowski at Steelworkers put me on my first investigation, but one of my others was to investigate the theft of oil from an Indian reservation. Poor Indians with stripper wells make a couple bucks a week in royalties. Trucks are taking away their oil. Osage Indian Reservation, we followed the trucks back. I was with the FBI, filmed it. There's a white guys, tall guys, standing on a loading dock in Oklahoma telling these people to steal. His name was Charles Koch. One of his vice presidents was wired. When asked why, remember Koch is already a billionaire. He's, you know, got the old, his daddy, uh, he inherited it from his daddy, so he got it the old fascist way. Koch said, when asked why he, a billionaire, why would he steal a few bucks from Osage Indians living in mobile homes in Oklahoma? And Koch said, and I quote, I want my fair share, and that's all of it. Well, I think he deserves what's coming to him, too. Too big, too big to fail, not too big to jail. Join the campaign, ballotbandits.org, and thank you so much. This is fighting Bob Fest, not snoozing Bob Fest. Bless you. Thank you.